Well, here are some interesting facts about the master mind, yeah. which uh, give you an idea of how yeah. important it is and how necessary that you embrace uh -uh. this principle and make use of it in attaining. I don't know how sure long that I'm patient. here. Any second can be gone. Hello everyone! Episode 3, we here! We back with it, it's extra lit this early morning on Monday. We don't usually come in this early, it's but early we here, we to here. Just yeah, the we here. fire. Definitely. 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 So, um, like Chris said, we are on episode 3, and today we are reviewing Kevin O'Leary's book, The Code Hard Truth on Men, Women, and Money. Yeah, it's good. It's a... What's your thoughts? Yeah, <laughs> let's just say well, what's your yeah. thoughts? This one, let's just say that this episode is going to be a little different, y'all. But we're going to share our thoughts. We're going to be, of course, open, honest, and candid, as we always are. Yes, um, so very. definitely just stay tuned for the full episode for that. We hope that you guys enjoyed episode two yeah. on the defining decade. Like That's probably been my favorite so far. Um, right. As far as like these last three books we did. But this, uh, this book was a... I, it's usually not... A book that's a hard read for me, right. but this one was. It just took my mind to another level, and <laughs> it took my brain to another level, and I just can't. I'm still trying to recover right now, so. Yeah. I didn't struggle with it, but I struggled with it. If yeah. That makes sense. I just what? Does that mean? what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. But let's just let's get on with the show. Let's get Definitely. on with the show. <laughs> so if you guys haven't, make sure that you check um, check out episode two on SoundCloud. It's a super dope episode, and let us know as always what you think about it yes, so please yes please. comments feedback everything is definitely appreciated we definitely appreciate all everybody that's supporting us definitely so we have a few updates for you guys so we saw some it's exciting really things it's going really on over here working um the first thing being we are on twitter y'all yes, finally definitely yes our actual first tweet was we on twitter is it? <laughs> 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 so make sure that you follow us again it's at, at mastermindpod on twitter to stay um, updated with us we'll be asking a lot of different questions going live everything just really maximizing the twitter space so definitely bring the reading to, to twitter it's gonna be real lit y'all so definitely like you, like you said earlier it's gonna be real candid transparent so let's just get it yeah and yes. I don't know if we should be announcing this, but... Just but, go ahead, Chris. Just go ahead. Sorry. Like, just do it. So, we we working on getting on iTunes. So, hey. you know, by the time you hear this, we should be on iTunes. Mm -hmm. But you got to go to our Twitter, our Instagram page to actually, you know, look at it and figure out what it is. On there. But we should be on iTunes by the time you hear this. Definitely. So, so that's yeah. a major move. Yeah, like, major move. we on episode three at this point. We're already, like, moving, making yes. moves to iTunes. So it's only up from here. Sponsors next. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for your support. Um, we're going to keep bringing you the dopest, hottest, litest content ever. So exactly. thank you so much for that. Also, too, if you've been checking out our Insta story, we have some bookmarks for y'all. Oh, yeah. 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 Got so, in my hand right now. They feel so good. And it's just it's dope. Really like, it's, like, super <laughs> inspirational. It has, like, a whole bunch of inspirational sayings on it, something on the back. Like, it's just dope. So we will be putting up on our social media the different places um, that will have our bookmarks. Definitely. Um, and also we'll be doing giveaways as well. So you yeah. never know. You may be the one getting one. So. And so, yeah, like, if you stay in North Carolina, uh, there should be anywhere between Charlotte, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, um, I can't really say what it is you all that don't stay in North Carolina can do, but we're we'll definitely trying to look out for We'll, we'll give away his grace. Yeah, we'll wow, give away like, I mean, I'm just saying, like... Give him some hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to help the people out, so I, I didn't know what we were doing for them, so... Yeah. yeah. They're real lit, though. They're colorful. And I know people use the booze bookmarks, so don't lose these, because they... They don't. Hot yeah, fire. Yeah, they're real lit, so... Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So... Let's get on with this episode, man. Um, how was your weekend, though? My weekend was boring. It was like, boring. it was raining for the past couple of days. It's been pouring down. Yeah, it's definitely been pouring down, down out here. Um, I had, like, a, a whole bunch. I was getting ready to curse, but Chris says... I only say, like, one curse word on here. <laughs> so let me... I but, mean, you um, were cursing so much you had to make it explicit. Yeah, whatever. No, you just didn't have to, <laughs> you didn't have to be funny. But um, I had, like, a lot of work to do this weekend. So yeah. I was pretty much in the house, snuggled up, little fuzzy socks on. I feel that. I feel chestnuts that. roasting on the open fire. Chestnuts roasting. <laughs> wow. Doing work, basically. I feel that. Mm, what about you? Well, yeah, my weekend was... 
I don't know. It was kind of kind of indifferent. I mean, I chilled. Yeah, I chilled all day Friday. Then Saturday, I uh, hung out with some people. But I really just been chilling these past days, trying to, you know, take in these last days as a 23 year old. So. Okay, so Shayla, <laughs> since, since we're going to do it, let's just go ahead and do it. Chris's birthday is tomorrow. At this point, though, it'll be like. I'll be like a couple of days. A couple of days in. And as a 24 year old. So. Yeah, so shout so, yeah. out to So yeah, you know. Ain't this perfect? Like two Aquariuses, like. On the mic. Are you really Aquarius? You know that. Stop, don't do that. I'm just trying to figure out. Like, I just You're never... late. You're late in the Aquarius bunch. I'm like right in the cusp. I'm, I'm secured in Definitely my spot. Not. You're Definitely not. not. You're late. Definitely not. You about to be out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, cool. So, weekend was cool. Yeah, weekend was good. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into, you know, we got to do our favorite little segment, the what's on your timeline. You know, we've been searching through Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, trying Definitely. to find the most talked about, funniest content. And so we have a little discussion about it, basically. And I think these these questions that's on the timeline this time is more... It's, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's kind of a, more of another, I guess on the serious, serious note? Well, the Twitter one might be. The Twitter one might be. Not yeah. the Facebook, though. I right. think the Facebook is ridiculous. But anyway, go ahead. You got it. It's okay, <laughs> so I'm going to start off with a post that um, I came across on Facebook. Okay. And y'all can let me know what you think about it, okay? Um, so basically, it was a picture, and it was obviously from a wedding, and I think it was like four or five guys and one girl, and they were all wearing like tuxedo type suits, but the girl she had on heels, because you know, of course, to adapt it to being a woman. Um, so the question for the caption was, guys, would you have one of your homegirls as a groomsman in your wedding party? And then ladies, if your guy friend asked you to stand with him on his wedding day, would you? But I got a little twist to this question. So, I would I guess this would be for the ladies or the guys, like, if a woman had a guy best friend, would he be a part of, like, her bridesmaid party? No. But not in a dress, obviously, but standing up there with them. No. So, Chris, because you have so much mumbling going on over there, no. <laughs> what are your thoughts? My thought is that as cool as me and my homegirl is, my best friend, Courtney, shout out to Courtney. Hey, Court. <laughs> she's definitely not going to be my groomsman. Why though? Because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I would, I think if anything, I would talk to my wife and be like, hey, you know, me and Courtney grew up together. Is it a possibility that she could be a bridesmaid? But she's not been a groomsman. Sorry, Courtney. <laughs> but, nah, fam. Nah. But is it just because, like, just because she, think... she's a she's a woman? I don't think she should. No, like, just keep it traditional. You know, so this raises a bigger issue, Chris. It doesn't raise a big issue. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's clear that out right now. I'm not saying that women can't do what guys do. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I don't want my homegirl being in my wedding as a groomsman. That's all I'm saying. Well, I personally feel <laughs> like she can't be my best man. No. <laughs> She'd be your best woman. No. I mean, I personally feel like if like my soon to be husband had like, you know, like yeah, a really good into existence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he um had like a you know, a best friend that was a woman, I mean, I don't think that that's like weird. Like I think like that's that's like that's like your person, it just so happens to be a woman and so I think that, you know, if she wants to put on her cute little tuxedo, cute little fitted suit, then that's fine. I don't think that that's weird. I think we're I don't think that. it's weird. I just don't want her being on my wedding as a groomsman. Well, it could be a groomswoman and change No, name. I don't wanna do that. Courtney, you just going to turn up after the wedding. So would you not, so if she asked you, could you be like stand up there with her bridesmaids, like with your suit on, like with her, or you know, on the side of her, you would say no? No, nah, because if I said yeah, then I would be contradicting myself, so I'm going to just go in now. See, Chris, <laughs> no, you canceled and wrong. <laughs> so what y'all, well, what's your, uh, what's your boy name that was, uh, your best friend that was at the party? Um, well, I had a few of my really good guy friends there. Um... I forgot his name, but he was a real cool dude. Would you want, would you stand up there with him? Yeah, hey, I don't have a problem with that. Let's see, nah, I can't get Cause you know, I'll be looking fly with my cute little suit on, so nah, yeah. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm with good, my little man. red bottoms on, like, I'm good. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Corey, we're gonna sit this one out, fam. <laughs> sit this one out. <laughs> okay, so guys, tell us what you think in our comments. We'll definitely post this question on our Instagram and of course, Twitter page. Would you guys, be a part of your best friend's wedding, whether they're a guy or a girl. You know, they ask you to be a part of their bridesmaid no. party or. And maybe I'm looking at it, looking at it different. But I think so. I may be very shallow about this, but I'm you just are. not. It's not shallow, <laughs> but I'm just not. I'm not doing it. Let's just keep it traditional, 
and just okay. roll with what we roll with. <laughs> this was like a this was a struggle it really was and I, I really tried to prepare myself mentally to come yeah. in and, and just really find something great okay I, was, I wasn't a fan it, it, it's not a terrible book it's not a, yeah it's not a bad book. but it's not a fave of mine I probably may not pick it up again but then again maybe I don't know <laughs> but see my thing was I think where we're at in our lives mm -hmm. that plays a tremendous factor in it because we're 23 year olds and it's like the back side of the book like this uh, part two part three and four is really not for us you know I mean it can the whole thing I mean it, it's it, I feel like it's like probably between probably like four chapters that are specifically really towards. Fun. Us. The other ones are probably for like our parents yeah, yeah, or yeah. someone definitely over 30. But don't get it wrong because we definitely preach on here to like prepare yourself. Right. And that's something that we talked about with, um, you know, the defining decade about like laying your foundation and stuff like that. But I just feel like in the way that this book was delivered. Yeah. Um, it could have been delivered way better than what it was. And I think, right. like you said, you can't get ahead of a lot of people by reading this book. But again, it's just like... Be careful with reading it because you don't want to take everything that's in the Literally. book yeah and go with it right and we'll discuss that later like yeah <laughs> yeah so you want to give like the, the specs for it yeah so it's basically a book about a financial guide on how to avoid money mistakes at every stage of life the tone of the book is very simple relatable and each chapter is designed to address each stage in life that you will come across to hopefully help you uh so they in a the book it talks about avoiding debt saving money, financially investing in your future. Uh, one of the quotes that I saw in the book that really interested me was, the book allows you to walk through some of life's biggest challenges with one of the sharpest financial minds. Which so. is, yeah, which is Kevin O'Leary. So if you guys are not familiar with him, then um, if you've ever heard of the show Shark Tank, it's a very, very popular show. He is one of the personalities on there. Um, and he is an entrepreneur, an author, businessman, investor. So that's where the uh, sharp financial mind is coming from. Yeah. Um, and basically, he just kind of takes us each chapter through like different instances in his life, starting from, you know, um, childhood with his mother um, being very financially um, savvy, all the way up into, for the most part, this point, oh, yeah. um, and how he's been able to maintain and even attain wealth right and i think the most interesting part about the book was the reason why he wrote the book and i thought that was really thoughtful um if you guys haven't read the book definitely pick it up but he talked about how this he met this lady one day and of course she knew who he was because she watched his shark tank but the, it said it talks about in the introduction um and he met the lady and they started talking and she said you know i don't want to ask you for any money i don't want to ask you for any advice but my husband just died um, I don't know what to do with the money. We get a check that comes in every month. And it's like maybe two checks that come in every month. And I just don't know what the money is going to. The bills are paid. Uh, my nieces and granddaughters keep asking for money and I keep giving them money. And she said, you know, even though I'm not asking you for advice, you don't have to give it to me, but what should I do? And he just told her, you know, like, you should stop spending money on people until you get every amount of your money in order. And he said that was the the motivation behind the book. And I think that's so, you know, so good that, you know, you want to be financially savvy, not just the man um, taking care of the finances, but the woman too, because, you know, you could be here one day and gone the next day. And everybody has to know, like, where the money is, what to do with the money, how we get more money from it. So, Right. That's that was that was really thoughtful to me, and it really took a uh, really had an impact on me. And I think too, kind of, I found a quote that pretty much summed up the book as well. Right. And it basically says, no matter how much money you make, the world is designed to take it away. And I feel like that is the most truest statement ever. I mean, from you know the technology that we have, right. yeah. our houses, cars, everything is like pulling at us to um, get our money. So it's very important for us to become. You know very conscious of how we you know spend our money and utilize right. our money um so that we remain on top and do not become like victim right. um you know to it yeah and that's i mean i definitely agree i think another well not a quote but just a theme of the book for me was you know just know where your money going 
Definitely. Yeah, because it's... I, I actually... I can't say the book did help me out a little bit because when I read, like, the first part of it, I did start tracking my finances and, like, I was spending way too much money. Like, yeah. I was just, like, frivolous and stuff. And, yeah. like, it's... Yeah, I, I I cut back though. So we yeah. come in, we start in 2018 strong. Strong. I mean, so <laughs> we gonna we gonna do a little a little smack and smooth. If you guys um, aren't familiar with that, we're well, actually gonna start the other way, smooth and smack. If you aren't familiar with that sort of saying, basically we kind of start out with the cons and then move into like the positive. Positive. Yeah. That must um, be some West Coast stuff. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, I think that. Well, to kind of give you a little bit more details about the book as well. So it has quizzes in it, yeah. different questions. So those are always nice because you can like write in the book. It has like yes or no um, yeah. questions. So you can be um, very mindful and conscious while you're reading, um, which is really good. But I would say for me, you know, we always kind of break down the key points that right. we took away from the book. So um, it has about... Um, it has 272 pages, mm -hmm. 16 chapters. It's broken up into, I believe, four, four parts. parts yeah. So um, for me, the points that I just want to kind of bring up is how to properly save money. I feel like as millennials and just young people in general, um, there's not a lot of discussion about us saving, saving money. money. Yeah. Like a lot of the dialogue is just like, if you have enough to pay your bills, then you're good. But I think that there should be more discussion about actually saving money and how to save it. So, you know, if you are working a part-time job or a full-time job, getting into the habit of, you know, saving 10% of your income right. each time you get paid um, so that you're putting money aside, you know, for a quote-unquote rainy day or, you know, um, you know, saving up for, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do um, in the future. I would say a lot of us are, you know, just getting out of college or at least, you know, within some sort of five to ten years span of right. Of, um, college or whatever it talks about in the book which I feel like is very important is the is the fact of making sure that you pay off your consumer debt first paying off those student loans credit card debts because yeah. you really can't move forward with you know getting into investing or even saving consistently if you have money coming out you know See, and that part I really didn't agree with because you don't think so? no nah, because I don't have I have some debt but I also invest too so it's like uh, Kevin, I get what you're trying to do, bro, but no, nah, you can't. I, I feel like you can do both at the same time, and I've heard a lot of people say, you know, clear your debt first and then invest, but sometimes it's, you know, you can do both. I mean, if you got the money to do both, then of course do it, but if not, then, you know, just stack your money and put it towards the, put it towards the debt, because um, I think that investing would kind of go side by side with saving, you know, so you invest in to get money back and I mean I wouldn't be investing just to blow the money you know mm -hmm. so I think you it kind of is like you know you save a little invest a little and then clear some debt so yeah that's my thoughts on it I, I just don't think you can you should put all your money towards the debt like okay yeah well I mean I think I, I can agree to that um, to a certain extent I think that um, if you're able to do both right. like you said then I think definitely but um, if you're someone who is still working on building your salary, then I right. think that your yeah. main goal should be on getting those student loans down and credit card debts down um, so that you can just be done with it. I mean, it just feels so good. To me, I get so much gratification from, like, paying off a bill. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to be, like, held hostage no more. Yeah, Let me just be exactly. done. Exactly. So I say that the quicker you're able to do that, the better. Um, I think the next thing definitely is from the whole saving money properly is um, definitely cutting costs where you can. I know for sure a lot of us be eating out, Yo. lunch, dinner, like think we'll be balling. We not. <laughs> okay, look, I'm, I'm I'm sitting over here with the Starbucks coffee, but, exactly. it was from it, but it was from a gift card. Don't, don't yeah, try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just buying stuff. So as much as possible as you can do things like at home and save money on a daily, the better. So good thing you said something about coffee because <laughs> my guy Kel said yes, the Kel. average... <laughs> <laughs> the average American spends money on coffee, magazines, lunches, and alcohol. Yeah, I'm pointing at my mom because she has to get coffee every single day. Oh, wow. And <laughs> she's doing it like that? She addicted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cut back on the Starbucks, though. I, I, no, I can't say my dad says he does go to Starbucks. I don't know. I don't want to lie on him and say he do it three days a week, but I remember it. Just, Be honest on dad. Yeah, yeah, I think, Pops, I think you said three days a week, so you're coffee, so you probably need to cut back on it. Not trying to tell you how to spend your money, but, you know, 
we got we got to save for the future. So Definitely. yeah, um, the saving part is is really crucial to me because I think you know saving for a rainy day. Mm -hmm. Those you know you can get a flat tire. I just drove down to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. It was raining. Anything could have happened, and then I would have been. I would have had to you know break that bread and spend that money. So definitely. So yeah, savings is a big part, and I think we yeah, like you said we should talk more about you know savings. I don't think it was ever like you know you get the the hints and everything that you're supposed to say, but when, when I was growing up, I don't think anybody ever really talked about like saving. We mm -hmm. just taught like you know you gotta get this money. Gotta, you gotta fall out, but yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody ever really talked about you know putting ten percent anywhere like mm -hmm. put ten percent on like buying food and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I know ten percent can seem like a high number depending on how much you make, but just like just start saving whatever you yeah. can, even yeah. if it's one percent, two percent. Just getting in the habit of doing it and build your way up to that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get, let's just say you you get um, your check is twelve hundred every two weeks. All you gotta do is just put like 120 down in your savings and then you're good. So, and then that's that's on top of like if you got debt, I would put any money that I'm putting debt towards, any money that I'm putting uh, towards debt into my savings once I get done paying my debt down. So, yeah. then you can really ball out and go to uh, Mexico. I'm not doing <laughs> So, another, another key point is credit cards. And I know that, man, it seems like the rhetoric around credit cards is always so negative as far yeah, as like, don't get credit cards, credit cards keep you in debt and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, like, probably, I probably didn't start building credit until like my last year of college because right. I just, yeah, because I just felt like, oh, well, if I don't have credit cards and I'm good, like I'm not, yeah, no, I don't owe nobody. That's... But that's the wrong way yeah, to think because you have to have, you have to have credit to do anything, to buy a car, to buy a house, like yeah. you have to have a line of credit. And I think that a lot of people think that like, like similar to me, like if I, if I just don't, you know, have any credits or if I don't incur any debt or whatever, then I'm, I'm good. good, but that's not true at all. And I'll tell you, I'm going to go ahead and put this out here. I'm not a financial expert, but let me tell you, my credit score is looking real healthy now because, you know, I follow these, these steps. Go to your bank, whatever, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, PNC, whatever, and ask about secure credit cards yeah. to um, to build your, your your credit line and go from there. Yeah, see, I, I, and I think I kind of started out early. Uh, yeah. My, I think I had a, I've had a credit card since I've been... I don't say high school, but let's say... No, I had a, I got my first debit card in high school, yeah. but yes, my <laughs> credit card, I probably got my sophomore year of uh college okay yeah and so you know the, the kid i've been doing real good man. I, I i've got i've got some debt i've got into some debt but we could you know tax season and everything cut the kid out so we back we coming back strong 20, yes. 2018 definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> definitely but yeah ask about a secure credit card because basically it allows you to like uh, make your limit. So, for instance, yeah. if you want to put down two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars of your own money, and it basically just can show them that you know how to pay on time, and right, you can start exactly. building from there, and then they open up your line of credit more and more, and that's how you start building. And so, the thing that I learned, and I've been like listening to other podcasts talk about credit and everything. If the quickest way to grow your credit is to uh, put the, if you have like a gym bill or something like that, put that on the credit card and just pay it off as soon as possible. If you make a yes. purchase at like Walmart. Um, or you know Starbucks as soon as you make that purchase you go to the bank and pay it and your credit score will shoot up you can be at from like a 680 to probably like a 730 within like six months so and another thing is to put like you know your bills uh, car payments and everything like that on the credit card because I know a lot of people now older guys who I talk to they just use credit cards alone and no debit cards because they don't see the the benefits of a, yeah. of a debit card so that's i'm trying to you know transition to that mm -hmm. but we, we working working so <laughs> yes so, yeah. and so the last thing of that don't let nobody trip you up by just saying just pay the minimum like yeah if you feel like if you feel like you're spending that much when you can't pay the whole thing off then don't don't spend that much because the minimum it starts to incur interest and that's how you start to get in trouble so if you can pay the whole thing off each month just do that yeah, like don't yeah. stress yourself out by just paying like the 15 dollars or yeah. whatever because it's just going to continue to compound each each time. And then you pay an interest, basically, off of way more than what you spent. Yeah, and another thing also is make sure that you pay attention to that fine print. Because mm. that fine print will slip you up. And they actually tell yeah. you it, how much um, you are, how, 
how long it'll take if you only pay the what is the bare minimum? Mm -hmm, the minimum, yeah. Yeah, so if you paying like eighty six dollars and it twenty two percent interest or whatever, yeah. yeah, it may take you probably ten years. Something crazy. Yeah, and they try to trick you up like that. So yeah, just you know, just read. You know, that's why we got this podcast so y'all can read, man. So for real. Make it, make it, make it look good. So yeah. Well, um, so like the last key point okay, was on got? the relationship. It's my favorite part. Sec, it's always your favorite part. <laughs> it's on the uh, relationship <laughs> section, and it's crazy because we were talking about this. Um, but as far as prenups, that was actually a question I had you have for you. Okay, well then. <laughs> so, don't ask me yet. All right, go ahead. Go ahead but uh, basically, and I'll just, you know, just run it off to y'all. Um, so Kevin, I mean, he talked about marriage. I mean, he went pretty much, and he does go into every stage of your life. Yeah. Um, so he talked about marriage and how basically marriage is a business agreement. Right. And you should look at it that way because, you know, people change. The love may not be on fire, you know, 10 years from now or whatever. And so... People get divorced um, every day, B. That's basically what he's saying. <laughs> so, you know, he was talking about, you know, it's very smart to get a prenup in your relationship and, you know, create the, the uh, criteria of it right. to protect, you know, your assets. Because I think a lot of people think about um, money in a relationship from, like, an emotional standpoint. And he was saying to take the emotion out of it and just think about the money and, you know, making things just simpler if anything were to happen. Is what I got. Yeah, I mean, I get that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think, I don't know. I think Kevin kind of just spoke from his his situation. Yeah, because the thing is, yeah. I, I, I don't know, like, but it was some good points about, like, you know, talking about money early, um, you know, how soon is it to talk about money, uh, cohabitating, mm-hmm. and, yeah, this is the part where I kind of, like, lost interest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it's still something... I guess it's something to be uh, mindful about. Mindful of, yeah. you know, if you do feel like that. Um, here's the thing: you guys, <laughs> you guys both have to have assets, have to have money. Like you gotta have, money have coming this in. conversation. Yeah, exactly. Like, don't just do it just because. Like, you're just being selfish. Like, really, both of y'all have to be on the same page about this whole prenup thing. And if you're not, that's issue number one. <laughs> like, like, yeah, you can't have a duffel bag coming into the relationship, and you know she got making seven figures like nah bro like you ain't getting no prenup like, nah. <laughs> you just to... yeah like come on now um i do think that i don't know prenup's kind of like a sticky situation because you know some people are like you know you get a prenup then it's not like you're going to be i guess you don't think y'all gonna be together long so yeah so it's 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 hard to talk about. it already puts it like a, a um a negative energy on the relationship to exactly, me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that conversation, you know, should be had. <sighs> yeah. So, so do you think it's a hard? Is it? What is my questions? Yeah, it's a question. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. we'll go into the questions. I'll go into my questions. Mm-hmm. Um, besides prenups, what do you think about joint accounts? Yeah. So, at what stage though? Um, I wouldn't do a joint account until I was married. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and I, and I think that it's smart to do that, um, as we were speaking before. Um, definitely because you should have one central account that right. um, that allows you to you know pay the bills or whatever needs to be done to upkeep your lifestyle. Right. Um, but I also think too that each person needs to have their own separate account. I don't really agree with it, like like you having like secret money because it's not really necessary. But I think that each partner should have their own money to maybe you know do the things that they. Uh, want to do that they, that, they not, that they don't necessarily want to take away from the family fund. So is that money in the separate account, the whole family's money? No. Okay. I was just making sure. I was just making sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, it's it's like that, you know, that person's money to do what they want to do with it. Okay. So in the book, Kevin talks about, you know, cohabitating um, to save money. And he's like, I guess he's a big, he's fond of this. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think you should move in with somebody just to save money? Um, not just to save money, but I think that um, it is not really transparent to say that most people don't do it for that reason. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. think that it's smarter. I mean, especially if you always owe that person house and it just makes sense like to move in together, then I think definitely, I, I don't think that a relationship can rest just on the fact that it's financially um, beneficial. It has to be more than that. But I think right. that, yeah, I mean, if it makes sense economically, yeah. And see, these are this is where this book clashed with 
the defining decade because like I told you in the defining decade I wasn't I'm not fond of moving in with somebody before yeah you was straight up yeah. in, that, in that little video we did yeah I'm just like nah bro like yeah. you can't spend a night on weekends but nah but I do think that the and I, I guess I'm kind of like going back on my word you are. I do think it's kind of <laughs> smart to move in if you if it's okay so if y'all like I guess in the engagement part go ahead and get a joint account you can go ahead and move in together but anytime before before then then, yeah yeah, like nah like nah so we might as well start building together while we're engaged Mm -hmm. you know to see what it's gonna be like when we're married so i'm glad you answered that question i got a few more questions for you (laughs) all right so i and i asked this question on my instagram and it got hella like hella feedback okay so it was which do you think is easier to talk about sex or money coming up in the conversation and i also asked this like in one of my group meetings and it was it was a good topic so i shared the results the uh instagram results was like i think it said 39 people voted for sex Mm -hmm. was easy to talk about and then maybe 35 said money was easy to talk about and so the thing was, how, why I'm bringing this up is because in the book, Kevin talks about how people think it's easier to talk about sex um, than money when money is basically what should be talked about first, like on maybe on the first date. I don't agree with, but maybe like third date, fourth date, if you see like a future with them. So what do you think? What are your thoughts? I don't think you voted either. So on my Instagram. So you just don't call me out. Yeah, I'm definitely calling you so that's out. That's what we're going to do this morning. <laughs> Um, I think that it's definitely easier to talk about sex. Well, I mean, I get that, but why would you want to talk about sex first? I'm, no, no, I'm not saying that that's what I would choose to do. I'm just yeah, saying in yeah, general, yeah. like, it's it's just easier to talk about that for reasons that we don't have to get into. But, like, <laughs> it's easier to talk about that. I think that it's harder to talk about um, money because I feel like you really start to see a person's potential selfish ways when you start to get to talking about money. And I think yeah. that... Um, depending on the person, it kind of if you talk about it too soon, it kind of make you come off as like a gold digger on either side, yeah, depending on yeah. you know what you're asking. Yeah. So I think it's just it's definitely hard, but you're right, it, it's something that should be talked about. So yeah, I kind of I don't know, I I wouldn't bring it up on a first date, like I said, no. but it would definitely be something like you know third day, fourth day. But maybe. what do you what do you ask? Like, what are your financial goals, or are you save like what do you ask uh i ask i would probably ask like yo uh do you have any student loan debt what's your loans looking like yeah what's your loans looking like b so (laughs) because i i mean i'm fortunate enough to not have any but i just know that would be like a you know a real big their debt becomes your debt if y'all get like engaged or um if y'all get married or whatever but Mm -hmm. i have had a situation where (laughs) where I found out before I started talking to uh, this young lady that she didn't have a savings account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was kind of like a a sticky situation because it was like, you know, am I supposed to, she think I'm supposed to be paying for everything or like, what are we supposed to be doing? But um, yeah, I think it's, I definitely think it should be like one of the first con- serious conversations you have. Uh, rather than talking about sex first. Okay. So that's my I thing. Agree. Yeah. Because you never know, y'all may go on like a little vacation. Yes, vacation. And, you know, <laughs> chill out and go to Atlanta or Las Vegas or something like that. And you need to know before you go with her, like, hey, am I footing the bill on everything? Or, like, we doing 50 50? Like, what we doing? <laughs> what <What's laughs> we doing? Move? All right, what's the move with this money? So, <laughs> so yeah, so, all right. My next question. How many questions you got? You be over so, oh, okay. So, in the book, all these questions came from the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Kevin talked about, my, my boy Kev, he talked about how he told his son, you know, if you date somebody and, you know, y'all go on the first date, don't go if you can't pay for it. So, we talked about this earlier. Across the board. So uh, I just want to know, like, 
what are your thoughts? Like, should the guy be paying first, or should it, like, are y'all going 50 50? Like, I'll just say this. <laughs> like, I'll just say it, it depends. It depends on who asks. Okay. To go on a date. If I ask you, like, hey, let's go somewhere or whatever, I think that it's already, like, an expectation that I'm taking you out. I'm bringing you, like I was okay. saying, I'm bringing you out of your element into mine, so I, I don't mind that. Okay. That um, if even if it's the me, first date? To be honest, I wouldn't even, with me, with me, I wouldn't even make that. Okay, I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That first move, so... But if you're asking me to come somewhere, then that means you're treating me, treating me. or yeah. so that's just how I feel about it. Yeah. But I also think too, and this is just how I move, like if we're like in a relationship or whatever, I think then it becomes like a fifty fifty back and forth thing. Like right. if we go to the movie this time, I got you. Next time you got me or whatever. Like, so should it be called out like, hey babe, I paid for the movie last time, what's up? <laughs> no, I think it should just be like I, I'm just very aware of that. I'm just very aware of that. Like I'm just very aware of that, so I don't think I have to do that. But you know what's funny though? <laughs> like, I had a situation where I was with like a um, a married couple just like hanging out. Yeah. And um, so obviously they're a counselor together, so it's like, who who treating? Yeah. <laughs> we I both mean, treat each other? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I don't know, I think um, from, and I, I just like try to date everything back to how my parents do like, I've seen like my mom pay sometimes, my dad pay sometimes, and then, you know, they just go back and forth, and it's not really a big deal about like, oh, I paid last time, like, yeah. you know, oh, I'm out. paying this bill, like, you should pay for the small stuff, so yeah, so yeah, that goes back into, well, not really, but I just wanted to bring it up, when old boy took his girl to the, um, <laughs> out to eat with oh, the best friend, episode, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah, so she definitely should have paid, let's just put that out there, definitely. but, um, all right, so, that was my questions. That's my question. You got anything you want to ask me? Well, I definitely want to ask you because there was a section about um, the wedding and how basically okay. you shouldn't um, go, all out, right? go all out for the yeah. wedding. So there's this big thing about the size of the ring, and I know it probably could be some pressure for the guy. <laughs> and you're thinking about marriage, like, if yeah. I don't really have it. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like it should be the um, three months of your salary, or you feel like... You feel, do you feel like whenever it's that time for you that you would feel like I need to show out on the ring? Like it needs to be a big ring? Uh, I don't know. Like that's a that's a that's a slippery slope because at the same time it's like should you go all out on the ring or should you go all out on the on the you know the actual wedding? But or should you invest? Yeah, or should you invest? Well, I don't know because by the time I. By the time I plan to get married, I feel like I'll be well off. Like, to be like, you know, I got you on the ring. Like, whatever you're trying to get. You know, I ain't gonna be like Gucci Mane and how, <laughs> <laughs> how Offset uh, got Cardi B, but we're we gonna be good. Like, we're gonna be good. But I do want that Rolex, though, with my. Uh, well, with that my, appreciates. Yeah. Those. Yeah, so I want I want the Rolex. Mm-hmm. Just, so, just so I can say I got it. Okay. And, you know? So, yeah, but. I don't know. I think it would be. I don't have a problem with that. Like, I feel like I have enough money by then. So I plan to be married like in three years. Just in case anybody wants to know. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. <laughs> so yeah. Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, exactly. So so yeah. What do you think though? Would you care more about the ring or the wedding? Um, <laughs> I think that naturally all women want a nice ring, but I think that I don't put so much emphasis on that. Okay. Um. I'm more about like making sure that like we straight afterwards. So you don't want the princess cut. That would be nice. But I'm not gonna, I, I would I wouldn't make him feel like so pressured that he had to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like it would be nice, but I would also like. So what if it wasn't the ring you wanted though? <laughs> what you mean? Like it's like, small or what? Yeah, like... it's small. It's small. Um. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of ring do you want? Let's just throw it out there in case any fellas listening. Like, a <laughs> like a like a tight type. Yeah, I don't know what type. I gotta, I gotta type like a picture or something. Just like I like the little circular diamonds. They're real nice. Is that a princess cut? I don't know. I don't know either. Anyway, I like the circular <laughs> diamonds. You know, I don't know something. Like, but it don't have to be crazy. Let me. You're making me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like I think not putting too much like crazy emphasis of it's course like we want a nice wedding and things like that but it doesn't have right. to be like we spending a million dollars 
you know, because you really the weddings are for other people. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So do you yeah. think that? And this, I don't think he covered this in the book, but do you think that is uh, the traditionally? I've heard that the bride's parents pay for the wedding. What do you think about that? My parents are like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. My parents already said, nah, that's, that's on us, please. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I think that um, it'll probably be me and my spouse. Spouse paying for it? Yeah. So, do you go all out on the wedding or do you go all out on the, uh, what is it, the honeymoon? Honeymoon. Go out on the honeymoon. Go out on the honeymoon. Go out on the Yeah. Go out on the sound nice. Yeah. It just sound nice. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see. Right. <laughs> um, so basically, to just to kind of wrap it up, we decided to read this book because I just feel like, well, we just feel like a lot of times the discussion about finances um, is it's not talked about, especially in minority communities. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times in um, white communities, just like in the book, um, he started talking to his children very early yeah. about finances so that they grow up with that sort of mindset. And I right. think a lot of times, especially in the um, minority communities it's kind of um money is seen as negative like if you if you want to be you know financially well off it seems as like it seems as like if you're obsessing over money and that's not the case and that's the thing that's kind of placed us in a box right um as minorities i think that as long as you're not you know you don't just worship money you know you want to do other you know other things with right. that, I think that's fine Paul but said, don't chase the money chase the dream all right i said that yeah, thank you for that. Joke. <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, so you should take away the negative thoughts about money. I think it's fine even if money is your motivator, but it just can't be everything. Right, exactly. And, Why did consume you? Yeah, and so we wanted to read this book basically to open up the discussion about finances so that you start thinking about it and you start planning accordingly because it is important. Um, you know, we, we're trying to get that mailbox money. We're trying to be, you know, create generational wealth. Right. And it has to start early. Yeah, let it start with you. So, yeah, yeah that's, and the main thing is just starting a conversation, honestly. Yeah. Uh, because, like you said, it's not talked about enough. And I even asked my mom, like, you know, not to be in it, not to tell my parents how to raise their, their child, but, you know, just asking them, like, yo, do y'all talk, talk to my sister about money just to see, like, you know, is she conscious of, like, you know, how much this costs or, like, is sound close real or, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like, what is money coming from, you know, because, you know, by the time she gets 15 or 16 and wants to start, like, really getting money and gets a car and everything, we want to let her know that, like, hey, it, it ain't, it don't grow on the tree. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, so, and also, um, I think that it's, it's really just about, you know, what are you, how are you trying to live your future life? Like, do you want to live your life in debt? Or do you want to live your life uh, frivolous or, you know, uh, frugal or however you want to put it? So I think that's how it all comes up about, like, you know, just talking about money and just learning how to spend money and learning how to use these tools that we have, such as the banks, the credit cards, financial advisors and everything. Um, shout out to my financial advisor too, man. You know, we out here. <laughs> yes. All right, Chris. So it's about that time of the show. We have to rate the book. So You first. Okay, <laughs> I give this book a 6 out of 10. Okay. Um, just because I feel like it wasn't um, super stimulating for me. Okay. It's more, for me, I would, only, I would like it says, it is a guide, but I wouldn't necessarily um, feel the need to read this book from cover to cover. Okay. I would just go in on the different parts as far as like what stage I'm in in life because right. I think the other parts are not necessary right now. I agree. Um, it's good to kind of have in the back of your mind, but not to actually pull from. Um, I think that, as we had discussed, it is very repetitive. I feel yeah, like it, could, it didn't need to be 272 pages at all. 172. Yeah. Oh. That's 172. Just trying to throw it out there to Kevin. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, take it out. Take down 100 pages? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you, so, I, I just don't feel like... It was, it was just an alright book. I mean, um, it, it's worth reading, but I don't feel like it's something that you should so just not run your, out to the store. So, not your best financial book you've read? Um... No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that makes, I mean, that makes sense. That's not. Yeah. It's not my favorite one. It's not, I don't think it's in my top ten either. Mm -hmm. Or top five. It, it's just all right. It, yeah. it, it, it does its job, but it, it's. I, you don't need to rush out to go get it. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, you say you give it a six out of ten. Yeah. You wanna give it a three? No, I'm not gonna give it a three. I'm not gonna <laughs> give it a three. I give it. I give it a seven. I give it a seven. Simply because. Yeah, it talks about stuff. You know, that stages of life that I'm not in yet, but it does give me an insight on those stages as to where I can 
I can grow and I can prepare myself for. So I give it a seven out of 10. Um, and I think he could have delivered better, mm -hmm. but he, I don't think he wrote this book for, for us. Yeah, I don't think this book was wrote for us. And it's kind of just like a, I don't know. I don't really look at it as a, as a guide either because a lot of the stuff in there, it was only like a couple of quizzes and a couple of like how to. So yeah, I give it a seven out of 10. Um, so see, mm, I guess so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you want to kind of drop with the critics? <sighs> yeah. Uh, it wasn't too good. <laughs> it was funny. It wasn't too good. I can tell you that right now. So, what I saw, and these are all Amazon customer reviews. So, 62% of people gave this book a five star. Uh, well, I'll tell you right now that the average is a 4.3 out of five stars. Which is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So 16% gave it a four star, 11% gave it a three star, 2%, well no, 6% gave it a two star, 5% gave it a one star. And some of the comments, I'm not gonna read the bad, the worst comments, um, but let's see, three, I truly believe that. I think we can that's too long. Uh, these comments are harsh, like very harsh. All right, so, <laughs> All right, so one guy who gave it a one star said that it was not so good. It was a waste of time and money. Tell us something we don't know, Kevin. And Kevin, just to let you know, bro, this is this isn't us saying this. Right. We comments. reached out to Kevin actually. Yeah. Did not get a response, but hey, it's all good. Though. It's all it's good. It's all good though. You right? want to blow it up? Yeah. So uh, let's see if I can find some more comments. I think those are like really it. Everybody really has something bad to say. Thank Grace, you didn't have a good one. Nah, I mean, he didn't have, I'm trying to find like the five star. Okay, here we go, all right, here we go. All right, somebody said that rated a five star. He said, I was actually surprised how well written, in, um, how well written this book was. I always thought Kevin was kind of a jerk on Shark Tank, but I came out much more of a fan of him after reading his book. He's concise, funny, and his monetary plans are not too daunting. A great book for anyone wanting a basic introduction to economics. And I get that. I mean, I get this. It is like a good way to start, like we said, start the conversation, but it's just, it's about where you at in your life. And I'm not at a stage in my life where I'm worried about a mortgage or yeah. okay. kids or anything like that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna transition into our second to the last section of the podcast. Okay. Which is our common goals section where we basically ask our friends, family, followers, supporters, listeners to send us advice um, that they would like us to answer on air. So Chris, would you do the honors? Gotcha. And so like we said, we come up with names. I um, won't say a real name out. But who we, what, what name we giving this week? Uh, let's go with Tanya. Okay. Yeah, let's go with Tanya. T. <sighs> All right, so this is what Tanya said. Tanya said, hey, Chris and Malia, I love you guys' podcast. Would like to know, um, yeah, shout out to Tanya, right? Yeah, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me off with the T. So uh, shout out to Tanya, T, whatever you want to call it. She said, I love you guys' podcast. Um, I've been reading the book, and I just want to know, what do you all think about, and we kind of answered this earlier, what do you all think about um, who should pay first and how soon the conversation should come up and about money? She, I think, yeah, she said she's been dating her guy for five months. Okay. So, yeah. What do you think? You started off. <laughs> what you got for her? <laughs> Um, well, you know, basically, just as we mentioned, I'll start with the second part of the question. Um, I think that once you start to have talks about uh, being in a relationship with this person, right. you should have um, a conversation about uh, financials. I think that that should be one of your deal breakers, depending on um, how they respond. Yeah. Um, but I think even before you decide to be with this person, you need to have the uh, all, all conversations um, with financials being one of them. <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, you know, and then make your decision from there because it is extremely important because you don't want to find out later on this person is, you know, frivolous with their money. Um, what was the first part of the question? Um, what did she say? She said that it was 
how soon you should talk about money and let's see who should pay who should okay. pay for the dates first yeah who should oh, okay um just like i said um i think that depending on if you ask him or if he asks you you know you kind of just decide from there yeah um, it's pretty much my thoughts well yeah i think and i'm real traditional with it i think the man should pay for the date first uh no matter who asks now i have had some like been on some first dates and the girl has tried to pay, but I think it was just like a to, child yeah, 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 just to see. But I should have been like, all right, go ahead. Yeah, you were like <laughs> <a porn> ball. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I think the guy should pay for the first date, and I think that money should be like, like you said, one of the first conversations. I think it should be like, if you go on three dates, I think it should definitely be like the third date. You should start talking about it, and you know, ask like. You know how much student loan debt you got. Uh, I'm not trying to be in anybody's business, but like, what we working with? Like, yeah. if we were to get married, you know, their debt becomes your debt, and right. you know, vice versa. So, yeah. Okay. We got through it. We got through it. <laughs> so, um, lastly, of course, we do our level up. We gotta check back in because from the second episode, we talked about the goals <laughs> that we wanted to accomplish. Um, you know, for the next episode, and right. for me personally, yeah, tell the I said I think I was a little overly ambitious. Okay, which no, happens. no such thing. I was no overly such, no such thing. No I was a little. Thing. Let me let me say I was a little overly ambitious. I said that I uh, was gonna start getting up at like five or five thirty, <laughs> but. For me, in order to actually make this happen, since it's been like a lifelong struggle, I have to start like in increments, which I have been doing, and build my way up to there. So like starting at like 6.45 and then building like 15, you know, adding, well, taking away 15 minutes from there. Um, is basically the plan. So Today I got up at 5, but... Because we had to be here. No, I could have got up later than that. But anyway, so I've been consistently working on trying to build that 15 minutes okay so i'm still working on that all right i'm, I'm being honest with y'all i'm yeah, still working on i'm supporting you thank you chris well you know like here we the, go because you have the easy one like the player that i am and the mvp that i am you know i succeeded on my challenge i said i was gonna go 14 days without eating cheese and i did what i said i was gonna do people you know man of my word so oh that's what it is that's exactly so freaking it is. easy like <laughs> <laughs> what the heck <laughs> you, yo, you could have gave me another challenge. That's a, that's the a challenge I, I said I was gonna do. So I succeeded. I conquered. Anyways, so, so I'm, I'm still working on uh, my challenge. So we're gonna check back in with you. We're gonna check back in with me, and I okay. feel like I'm gonna be better because I'm gonna be better. The next Only time up from here. Only up from here. So what are you working on? Because I know I got something for you, but you ain't gonna do it. What about the next challenge? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? You gotta do a social media binge. Well, well, it's actually a break. A social media break? Yeah. From posting on my personal Instagram? Even getting on there. I can do that. I can do that. Easy. That's easy money. For 14 days. That's easy. And your birthday coming up tomorrow, so you want hold to Hold on, hold yeah. on. <laughs> see? <laughs> see? Exactly. Hold on. So, we can do... No, we can don't. Do the start afterwards. <laughs> I gotta have a birthday post. I gotta have a birthday post. We can start the day after my birthday, and I swear I'll, I'll stay out 14 days. I stay off up until. Cause we need to, yeah. I stay off my personal. I can't stay off the mastermind. Yeah, okay. I stay off my personal though. That's easy. I can do that. All right. So what's yours though? I told you I'm still working on my. No, I, I, I have, have a new challenge. No, I have to no. That first. You got to multitask. No, no. Come on, now. we got to do a new challenge. And you got to do this. So if you you gonna you gotta keep letting these stop letting these challenges build up. No, okay. I'm going to um. <laughs> I'm gonna drink only water. For the next 14 days. You've been doing that already, no, right? No, I haven't. Not only water. What else you been drinking? Juice. <laughs> that sounds so childish. <laughs> That's easy, though. That's not easy. I guess so. That's an easy challenge. Yo, cheese. Okay, anyways. <laughs> That's an easy challenge. Anyways, so I'm going to drink my water. Don't you got like a little bucket or something like that? You're, like, a gallon you're of water. A gallon of water? Mm-hmm. You got like marked off and everything, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, I have a bigger one now. I guess that's it. Okay, we're going to start from there and grow. But anyway, so those are <laughs> challenges. Of course, guys, send in your challenges that you want to do for the next 14 days, and we're going to support you and push you. Definitely. And, of course, be transparent about this whole thing because it's all about growth. All right, guys, so as we end, 
this episode of the Mastermind Podcast, we of course want to leave you with a little bit of advice. Yeah. Definitely. So I've been hearing from a lot of people lately about the feeling of being overwhelmed. Um, we are on our second month of 2018 and these goals that we have are getting overwhelming. Life is just getting overwhelming. And so a quick piece of advice that I have for that is, which I always say, I think I mentioned this last week, is to just break down your goals and your objectives into three. It makes it easy to digest and you will not feel overwhelmed by it. So like I think I mentioned before, make sure just top of every week, write down everything that you want to accomplish for the week and then take three things each day from that list and just make sure that those three things get done by the end of the day. And you won't feel so overwhelmed because it's like three, that's, that's nothing. Like I can do three things a day and then be done. Yeah. So just focus on that. Okay, so my piece of advice, I've been talking to a lot of people and I've been saying people like, they've been making these goals and everything, but they just can't feel like, they, I don't know if they feel overwhelmed, but they just don't, they don't have the drive. Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of excuses going on. Um, I'm not trying to call nobody out. Yeah. So you're not drinking no water? (laughs) (laughs) I'm just, (laughs) really, can I, can we start asking? All right, all right, okay, all right, all right, so... (laughs) My thing is, you know, man, just get out there and do it. That's my piece of advice. You know, uh, do it while you can, honestly, because we're young. We got all our bones. We got all our mental space. So just get out there and do it. Um, I think that sometimes we get too caught up in what we're trying to do, and we don't see the end. But what I've always found to help me is to always know why you why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and just a little book plug out to throw out there. You all want to, you know, capitalize on that. Start with the book, know your why, and just go from there. Like, just do it. Stop making excuses, and let's get this money. So, money. That's my. That's it. So. All right, guys. So that is all from us for the episode third three. episode of the Mastermind Podcast. We hope that you guys have enjoyed. Yes. The next book that we will be reading is Relentless by Tim S. Grover, right? Yeah, Tim is my guy. If yes. all you um, before we start on it. You all should look up Tim. He's the person that trained Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. Dwayne Wade. I think he worked with Kobe, so he's a he's an exception. Yeah, yeah, a good guy. He hasn't even played like a, a day of basketball in his life. So, um, yeah, Tim is Grover, relentless. Let's just get it, man. Uh, you want to shout anybody out before we go? Shout out to my mama. Hey, shout out to Lisa. Yes. What was that? What was that line on God's playing? On the my bed and my mama. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Shout out to my mom. And my family. My family is the the best. Yes. And shout out to Chris, too. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, shout Shout out. out. Yeah, so we will see you guys the next time we meet. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so make sure you keep it locked. We are the Mastermind Podcast, and we hope that you enjoy. Master the mind.